Hey, good evening. Today's daily reading is coming from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 22. As always stated prior to reading, get to a church that has Sunday school or Bible study where the word can be broken down and shared with you for an easier understanding. Get with some friends who break bread and have church amongst one another and get some understanding from sharing with each other. Also get you a Bible. There are numerous versions from King James to the NIV. Just get you a Bible that you can read and comprehend. But most importantly, and above all the things that I've said, call upon the Lord. If you knock at his door, he will answer and fill you up with wisdom if that is what you seek. Amen. Second Kings chapter 22 reads as follows. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 31 years. His mother's name was Jedidiah, daughter of Adiah. She was from Bozkath. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and followed completely the ways of his father David, not turning aside to the right or the left. In the 18th year of his reign, King Josiah sent the secretary, Shaphan, son of Azilah, the son of Meshulam, to the temple of the Lord. He said, Go up to Hilkah, the high priest, and have him get ready the money that has been brought into the temple of the Lord, which the doorkeepers have collected from the people. Have them entrusted to the men appointed to supervise the work of the temple, and have these men pay the workers who repair the temple of the Lord, the carpenters, the builders, and the masons. Also have them purchase timber and dress stone to repair the temple, but they need not account for the money entrusted to them, because they are honest in their dealings. Hilka the high priest said to Stephan the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. He gave it to Shaphan, who read it. Then Shaphan, the secretary, went to the king and reported to him, Your officials have paid out the money that was in the temple of the Lord and have entrusted it to the workers and supervisors at the temple. Then Shaphan, the secretary, informed the king, Hilka, the priest, has given me a book. And Shaphan read from it in the presence of the king. When the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his robe. He gave these orders to Hilka, the priest. Ahilkam, son of Shaphan, Akbor, son of Micah, Shaphan, the secretary of Isaiah, and king's attendant, go and inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah about what is written in this book that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger that burns against us because those who have gone before us have not obeyed the words of this book. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written there concerning us. Hilkah the priest, Eklam, Akbar, Shaphan, and Isaiah went to speak with the prophet Huldah, who was the wife of Shalom, son of Tikva, the son of Herhaz, keeper of the wardrobe. She lived in Jerusalem in the new quarter. She said to them, This is the Lord, the God of Israel, says, Tell the man who sent you to me. This is what the Lord says. I am going to bring disaster on this place and its people, according to everything written in the book of the king of Judah has read. Because they have forsaken me and burned incense and other gods and aroused my anger by all the idols their hands have made, my anger will burn against this place and will not be quenched. Tell the king of Judah who sent you to inquire of the Lord, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says concerning the words you heard. Because your heart was responsive and you humbled yourselves before the Lord when you heard what I have spoken against this place and its people, that they will become a, court, a curse and be laid waste. And because you tore your robes and wept in, pre in my presence, I also have heard you, declares the Lord. Therefore, I will gather you to your ancestors and you will be buried in peace. Your eyes will not see all the disaster I'm going to bring on this place. So they took her answer back to the king. 2 Kings chapter 23. Then the king called together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. He went up to the temple of the Lord with the people of Judah. The inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests and the prophets, all the people from the least to the greatest. He read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant which had been found in the temple of the Lord. The king stood by the pillar and renewed the covenant in the presence of the Lord to follow the Lord and keep his commands, statutes, and decrees with all his heart and all his soul, thus confirming the words of the covenant written in this book. Then all the people pledged themselves to the covenant. The king ordered Hilkah, the high priest, the priests next in rank, and the doorkeepers to remove from the temple of the Lord all the articles made from Fabal and 
Asherah, and all the starry host. He burned them outside Jerusalem in the fields of the Kidron Valley and took the ashes to Bethel. He did away with the idolatrous priests appointed by the kings of Judah to burn incense on the high places of the towns of Judah and on those around Jerusalem. Those who burned incense to Baal, to the sun and moon, to the constellations and to all the starry host, he took the Shira pole from the pimp temple of the Lord to the Kidron Valley outside Jerusalem and burned it there. He ground it to powder and scattered the dust over the graves of the common people. He also tore down the quarters of the male shrine prostitutes that were in the temple of the Lord, the quarters where women did weaving for Shira. Josiah brought all the priests from the towns of Judah and decorated the high places, from Geba to Beersheba, where the priests had burned incense. He broke down the gateway at the entrance to the gate of Joshua, the city governor, which was on the left of the city gate. Although the priests of the high places did not serve at the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, they ate unleavened bread with their fellow priests. <clears throat> he desecrated Topeth, which was the valley of ben Hinnom, so no one could use it to sacrifice their son or daughter in the fire to Molech. He removed from the entrance to the temple of the Lord the horses that the kings of Judah had dedicated to the sun. They were in the court near the room of an official named Nathan Molech. Josiah then burned the chariots dedicated to the sun. He pulled down the altars the kings of Judah had erected on the roof near the upper room of Hazaz and the altars Manasseh had built in the two courts of the temple of the Lord. He removed them from there, smashed them to pieces, and threw the rubble into the Kidron Valley. The king also desecrated the high places that were east of Jerusalem on the south of the hill of corruption. The one Solomon king of Israel had built for Estoreth, the vile goddess of the Sidonians, for Chemosh, the vile god of Moab, and for Molech, the detestable god of the people of Ammon. Josiah smashed the sacred stones and cut down the Asherah poles and covered the sites with human bones. Even the altar at Bethel, the high place made by Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who had caused Israel to sin, even that altar and high place he demolished. He burned the high place and ground it to powder and burned the Asherah pole also. Then Josiah looked around and when he saw the tombs that were there on the hillside, he had the bones removed from them and burned on the altar to defile it, in accordance with the word of the Lord proclaimed by the man of God who foretold these things. The king asked, What is the tombstone I see? The people of the city said, It marks the tomb of the man of God who came from Judah and pronounced against the altar of Bethel the very things you have done to it. Leave it alone, he said. Don't let anyone disturb his bones. So they spared his bones and those of the prophet who had come from Samaria. Just as he had done at Bethel, Josiah removed all the shrines at the high places that the kings of Israel had built in the towns of Samaria and that had aroused the Lord's anger. Josiah slaughtered all the priests of those high places on the altars and burned human bones on them. Then he went back to Jerusalem. The king gave this order to all the people, celebrate the Passover to the Lord your God as it is written in this book of the covenant neither in the days of the judges who led Israel nor the days of the kings of Israel and the kings of Judah had any such Passover been observed but in the 18th year of King Josiah this Passover was celebrated to the Lord in Jerusalem furthermore Josiah got rid of the mediums and spiritists the household gods the idols and all the other detestable things seen in Judah and Jerusalem this he did to fulfill the requirements of the law written in the book that Hilkah the priest had discovered in the temple of the Lord. Neither before nor after Josiah was there a king like him who turned to the Lord as he did, with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his strength in accordance with all the law of Moses. Nevertheless, the Lord did not turn away from the heat of his fierce anger, which burned against Judah because of the Manasseh had done to arouse his anger. So the Lord said, I will remove Judah also from my presence as I removed Israel, and I will reject Jerusalem, the city I chose, and this temple about which I said my name shall be there. As for the other events of Josiah's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? While Josiah was king, Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, went up to the Euphrates River to help the king of Assyria. 
King Josiah marched out to meet him in battle, and Necho faced him and killed him at Megiddo. Josiah's servants brought his body in a chariot from Megiddo to Jerusalem and buried him in his own tomb. And the people of the land took Jehoahaz, son of Josiah, and anointed him and made him king in place of his father. Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. His mother's name was Hamultal, daughter of Jeremiah. She was from Libna. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, just as his predecessors had done. Pharaoh Necho put him in chains at Ribda, at Ribla, in the land of Hamath, so that he might not reign in Jerusalem. And he imposed on Judah a levy of a hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. Pharaoh Necho made Echom, son of Josiah, king in place of his father Josiah, and changed Elikim's name to Jehoiakim. But he took Jehoahaz and carried him off to Egypt, and there he died. Jehoiakim paid Pharaoh Necho the silver and gold he demanded. In order to do so, he taxed the land and exacted the silver and gold from the people of the land according to their assessments. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 11 years. His mother's name was Zebediah, daughter of Padiah. She was from Rumah, and he did evil in the eyes of the Lord just as his predecessors had done. Amen.